please confirm if you can see my screen. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So how many of you uh, know the cloud basics? Just want to get a crowd to grab. How many of you know the basic cloud things, right? How cloud works, what are the models, subscription models, basic models, benefits of cloud. This basic screens I'm just going to walk you through. This is what I'm asking you that, uh, <clears throat> let me open that. So I'm just asking about this basics. How many of you about these basics? What is cloud computing? How does it work? Advantages, disadvantages. How many of you know about it? I'm just thinking you, you're not aware about it. Let sure. me just take some of the basics and I'll come to that. <clears throat> Okay, so let me introduce myself first. My name is Ritesh. I do have a total of 12 years experience in software industry. So I'm going to train this uh, AWS architect plus DevOps. There are two things Welcome we have. Welcome to KDM Music World, Bluetooth device. So there are two, two types of courses will be there. One is we are targeting for the AWS solution architect. If your career reason is to become a solution architect or the developer, then this is a curriculum that you can get a curriculum from Amit. And second would be training would be on the AWS uh, solution architect plus DevOps. First few lines, uh, first few slides will be targeting on the AWS uh, solution architect. And then in last, we will start covering about <coughs> DevOps also. In DevOps, we are going to cover a lot of things like understanding Git, working with Jenkins, how to create pipelines, working with Terraform. Then another examples like Docker Deep Dive, Kubernetes, and Sonar Cube and other monitoring tool. Everything in these sessions will be 100% practical. I do not believe in theoretical knowledge. So I'm going to start with very, very basic things today, which we say cloud computing. So what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is one of the service available on the internet, where servers, networks, storage, development tools, and even applications are enabled over the clicks of button. So gone are the days when people used to see that, that only few services you can see over the internet, over the cloud. Now, almost every service is available over the cloud. Let me try to explain you what I'm trying to say here is, so when you go to cloud, there are multiple cloud vendors available. One is AWS, one is Azure, one is GCP, Google Cloud, right? So multiple cloud vendors are there. So now the question comes is which one you should use. My advice would be go for AWS because it has a great market percentage in the industry. It has more services available with it. So, so what are the things mainly we are targeting for the cloud? Like I said, what are the main examples? What are the main things? What are the main advantages of the cloud? Like I said, it is cost saving. How you can say it is cost saving? First of all, you need to understand how cloud works. So traditionally, if I am working, let's suppose I am working with one of the company and that company name is TCS, okay? All right, company name is TCS and I'm working with them. I need one dedicated server. I need one dedicated server. Let's imagine this is my server. 
and I need this server to host my code. That means I am going to create this server as a web server. So what I will do in that case is as a TCS employee, I will ask my manager to schedule or I would say I will raise a request and they will install a server in their data center. That is a traditional approach. Gone are the days. I'm talking about 15 to 20 years back of time, right? Now the days, how you work these things, how you work on this scenario is you have the AWS portal access, right? You have the AWS portal access. You have the GCP access, Google Cloud Platform access. You have the Azure access, right? In any of the portal, you can go and raise a request that I am looking for this capacity of machine. For example, my requirement says I need 16 GB of RAM and I need 48 or 480 GB of hard drive. Hard drive. So what I will do in that case, should I go to hardware provider now? No, answer would be no. That's the traditional way of doing the things. Now nobody can wait for that, right? You cannot wait for a couple of days to install a server and everything. Now you, what you are looking for, because everyone is looking for their services very quickly. It's a time they are, we are demanding, right? So in that time, if you're looking for 16 GB of RAM for 80 GB of hard drive, you can very easily this, you can achieve this thing very easily in AWS, GCP or Azure. So I'm just discussing about three market vendors. There are 100 plus vendors available in the market, like AWS, GCP, Azure. So for example, <clears throat> go with this thing only. I am going to ask, I need 116 GB of RAM. What I will do? I'll go to my AWS account and create instance very easily. They have given a flexibility to you. So what I am going to do in front of you, just to tell you that I'm how I'm teaching is first thing first, I will tell you how to create EC2 instance using Windows operating system operating system and then as a second lab what i will do is i will create ec2 instance but this time i will be working with linux as operating system and in both the use cases i will host my web app basic web app so default web app i'm going to work default web app here also in Linux, I'm going to work with default web app. So these two scenarios I will cover. Once I'm done with this two scenario, I will also come to AMI. <clears throat> AMI means Amazon Machine Image. Amazon Machine Image. I will be discussing how to create AMI, how to create instance from AMI. So don't worry. Just sit, relax, and enjoy this session. How to create EC2 instance? Now, first question first, what is EC2? What is EC2? I'm going to create a EC2. I'm not sure how many of you knows about it, but what is EC2? When I, when I say EC2, I'm saying Elastic Compute Cloud. And guys, please trust me on this part. This is a fancy term. This is the only fancy term. Actually, it is VM. When I say virtual VM, it's a virtual server. It's a virtual server. Nothing beyond that. It's a virtual server. It's a, you can say, uh, it's not <clears throat> available in the physical manner, but it's, it is a virtual server that I'm going to create in AWS. With few clicks, I will create one server in front of you. But before that, let me try to explain you few things about AWS, which is going to help you to understand about AWS. First thing first, you need to understand here in AWS, we have a concept of region. Region. 
when i say region i'm talking about geographical location of aws locations for example aws says i am giving services in india i am giving services in us i am giving services in singapore i am giving services in dubai i am giving services in another country right in that case what aws says is i have a mumbai region for example this is india region similar like aws says i have another region copy this i have another region which is in us which is in us i am calling it northern virginia region right northern virginia region in that case similar like this i have another region aws says in singapore singapore now you might be asking why ws is creating three different regions at different different places or we have at least as of now if you go with the ws documentation we have more than 31 regions available if you go with the ws documentation it will show you exact number of ws infrastructure so for this, you will need to type AWS Global Infrastructure. It will start showing you global infrastructure of AWS. It says it has 31 launch reasons with multiple availability zone. I'm going to explain you what is availability zone. But in short, it has 99 availability zone and 450 plus point of presence. So let's understand what is region region aws says is hey i have a customers in india i have customers in us i have customers in singapore i cannot create a one data center and serve to all right i cannot create a single data point so what they are doing is they are creating multiple data centers at different different locations that's what we call it availability zones availability zones Uh, people joining uh, from the name oppo iphone please do not join from join from your real name if you really want to join the session i will otherwise i'll exclude you from the session so here in mumbai region north virginia region what they do is they have different different availability zones for example aws says in india we have three availability zones when I say three availability zones, I'm talking about AZ1, AZ2, AZ3, AZ3, three data, three data centers, or you can say availability zone, availability zone and data center, both are same thing. In layman terms, I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about very fancy terms. This is very data centers, pure data centers. As per the cloud principles, good cloud principle, it says one data center should be 300 miles from another location. For example, I'm saying this is in location one, any location it can be. And second location is different. So there would be a difference of 300 miles in every location, every data center, every data center. Amit, they are not joining with their real name. They are joining with Oppo iPhone. Okay, so AC21, AC23. And let's imagine this is location three. All right, guys, this three data centers. Now the first question comes in our mind when you go for the interview or certifications. Why three? Why not four? Why not two? Why not five? Why? Why three? Because every cloud vendor is going for that day. Two are not sufficient. If you're saying I'm going to create one data center and you are keeping one copy, extra copy of it, that copy can be also hamper, right? 
So that's the reason they have arrived on a decision as a cloud standards. We should have three. In the initial days of the cloud, they were having two data centers also. In some of the organizations like IBM, Oracle, they still have two data centers yet. That is not the against of principles of cloud. That is also fine. But what AWS is targeting for in every region, if you see the region list, these are the region list, basically. If you click on <clears throat> regions and AZ, it will show you all the regions. In regions, for example, in North America, they have one, two, three, seven regions. These two are government regions that you can exclude. But under these regions, you have in US West region, you have availability zone four. Now the first question comes in mind. I am explaining you here in Mumbai, there are three data centers, but in, in US West, they have availability zone four. It might be possible. That is what I'm saying. According to their need, they are creating a data centers. In US, there is a huge demand. Plus, they have created a systems in a way so that they can serve the less latency. Right? So they have created the multiple data centers, multiple huge demand is there. In US East region, we have six availability zones. But if you go with India in Africa, in Asia Pacific, if you go with India, in India now we have two regions. One is in Mumbai, one is in Hyderabad. So we have two regions now. So if you go with it, so if we, <clears throat> it will tell you in India, we have Mumbai, right? We have Hyderabad. Hyderabad is recently launched just four to five months back. It has three availability zone. Similarly, Asia Pacific Mumbai has three availability zone. So if you go with this diagram now, why they are creating a three copies is because they want to store your data at a safer place. If one data center is going to impact due to flood, due to earthquake, due to political reason, due to electricity issue, due to any possible issue, in that case, what will happen is they will move your data to location two, or they create a copies in a way so your data is secure, so data is safe. If entire data center is down, down still you have location two, still you have location three with you, right? With this mindset, what they internally doing is let me just. Uh, delete this part from now <clears throat> and expand this. Let's imagine this is one data center. I'm just moving this part to here. Let imagine this is one data center. Now I'm going to start with EC2. What is EC2? Like I have created, uh, told you, I'm going to create two EC2 instances, right? Uh, I've been going to create two EC2 instances, one using Windows operating system, one using a Linux operating system. So what they do internally is when you talk about EC2, EC2 is an elastic computing cloud, which is a computer, which is a virtual machine. I'm going to create one virtual machine now in front of you so that you can, you can understand now. So for this, I'm going to log in in my AWS account. This is my AWS account. I'll go back to services and in services, I will look for EC2. The moment you type EC2 in this search bar, it tells you it's a virtual service services in the cloud. Click on this EC2. And this is an EC2 dashboard. Click on this instances. And guys, if you have any questions, feel free to speak. You can unmute yourself and let me know your questions if you have any questions till now. Arvind, Vivekanand, Deepak, Gaurav, any questions guys? Manoj, Yashika, Vivek, Sham, Shivam, any questions guys? So uh, I have one, one uh, 
I'm, I'm still confused between the uh, you know EC2 uh, or the region you're saying. Mm -hmm. so the region and the data center you are saying. So, are, mm -hmm. so what is the region and the uh, data center? I understand that that's a, a single point a data center. And yeah, region is something that you can uh, data yeah. center is your physical presence. Right. But region is your logical presence. Okay. Under one region, I have three data centers. Okay. So when you say three data centers, these three data centers are connected with high fiber lines, very, very powerful lines, where internet connectivity is on boom, you can say. Hmm. But so yes, I know. Yeah, so so the data will be copied on uh, all the uh, these locations, or it will be available on one machine only. I, I mean, uh, availability zone. So it depends on which service you are working on. For example, you are going to work with S3 service. Mm -hmm. So in S3 service, you also go to option to store your data in single DC data center, or you also go to option to store your data on multiple DC data centers. In that case, if you are choosing that option, because I want to store that data on multiple data centers, AWS is going to charge extra money. But if you are saying I want to store my data to one AZ, one availability zone, they are going to give you discounts. Okay. So in, in case of any uh, natural disaster, so mm -hmm. will they recover uh, uh, a data stored in one availability zone? Yeah, that is what I'm saying in, in normal scenarios where you are working with financial critical applications or your data is uh, required or data is uh, critical, you cannot go with one region. Right. This is not a best practice. In case you are saying I won't, I just want to store a couple of data, which is, which might need, but in case it is going to uh, delete it, mm -hmm. somehow it is going to delete, then I'm fine. Still, I have the data at another place. Yeah. That only cases you can go with single availability zone. Also, in single availability zone, they create multiple copies of your data in single availability zone. If sometimes what happens is one rack is down, but your data center is up. Your one rack is down. You understand rack, right? that might be possible. Okay. So uh, I have a small doubt on availability zone. Like, yeah. do you mean availability zone in the sense a small part of server in the uh, Mumbai region? No, no, it's not small part of it. When you say availability zone in India, AWS has three locations. For example, one is Pune, one is Hyderabad, one is Mumbai or any other location. It is not small. It is a big data center where AWS is keeping hardware machines physically. Okay. But they never disclose exact location to you. For you, it is AZ1, AZ2, AZ3. Okay. So yeah, if, it, if it is said Mumbai, so Mumbai internally has three locations. Yes, right. Okay, they're going to store. So yeah. can if we customize go, like yeah, one yeah, availability so, zone I need in Mumbai and other in Hyderabad? Can we do that? Yes, yes. I will show you that example also. Okay. So you can do that. But some of the applications, for example, I am working with very critical application where I need a lot of bandwidth, good bandwidth. In that case, you can also have an option that you want to create all your instances in single availability zone. That is also possible. I will show you an working example of it. Then you will understand better. So ultimately, any more questions guys till now? So in practical, one zone will be your uh, production and one will be your uh, disaster recovery. That is PR, you can say, right? You can say it like this. Okay. But actually when you do, uh, when you do disaster recovery, you handle your things on the region level instead of handle on the availability zones. Okay. It depends. If if you take example of Aadhaar card application in India, 
like uh, in in that case that's handled on the national level but if you take the example of facebook or multi region applications you have to create multi region architecture i hope uh, you are understanding this language right okay cool so here what i am trying to under, uh, explain you that aws how aws is internally working let's imagine this is your hardware machine this is your hardware machine not your aws hardware machine aws is creating machine and it you are coming as a customer this hardware machine multiple hardware machines are available in data centers you can say i have created four but multiple data multiple machines are available in thousands machines are available now you are coming as a user i am deleting this one extra region here i am deleting it this is a you right you are coming to aws hey aws i need 4 gb of machine what aws do in that case is they cut out a instance from this hardware they cut out a instance and give to you that is what we call it virtual server why virtual server because the existence of this server is not existence of this server is not right but it is virtual only out of this physical machine they have cut out one of the machine and give to you using virtualization technology which using virtualization for example i am saying this is aws hardware and this has a capacity of this has a capacity of 1 tb ram and uh, 1000 tb hard disk for example you can understand this this is this much capacity they have in single computer and you are asking for 4 gb or 6 gb with example i am just saying you are asking for i am looking for 8 gb of instance ram i am talking about and i am looking for 100 gb of hard disk 100 gb of hard disk what you do in that case is you give a command to aws what aws is giving aws is giving back to your virtual server right that virtual server is having 8 gb of capacity and 100 gb hard disk it is a real time system for you but for aws it's a virtual server for you you can do everything with it it's just a matter of physical appearance that's it else everything you can do on this system this is a virtual server let me create one system yeah cyber please yeah uh is this a uh, technical distributed operating system like to divide your voice is very low earlier it was good okay uh as uh, is aws hardware gonna use the distributed operating system to divide the memory yeah yeah i will show you demo of it let's go to instances i will show you how i what i'm talking about go to ec2 once you go to ec2 click on virtual server in the cloud click on ec2 here i am going to create instance or you can call it virtual machine or you can call it instance virtual machine or machine all words are same this is aws dashboard here it is showing you instance running are zero as of now so let's click on it instance so moment you click on this it will start showing you number of instances in your account in mumbai region and guys make sure when you are entering in your account after creating account i will tell you in next session how to create a free session who are going to enroll for this i will uh, help them to create a aws account so once you enter in your aws account you will see options here regions this is what i am talking about so as of now i am working with asia pacific mumbai but in case you are working with tokyo in case you want to work with ireland or other regions what you have to do just click on us east or any region any other region where you want to work with 
you will be working with that region now north virginia now you are working in north virginia and one more very very important thing the pricing model of aws go change when you change your regions in north virginia they have higher prices in india they have less prices it depends on service to service data centers of data sector cost employees cost lot of things comes into the picture when they calculate the cost of their services you just make sure you are choosing the right location or right region before working in my case i am working with asia pacific mumbai so when i am going with asia pacific mumbai i am going to create one instance of window like i described here i am going to create one ec2 instance using windows operating system how i am going to do that click on launch instance the moment you click on launch instance it will launch a window for you and due on this window you have to fill a couple of details for example i'm saying web server 1 all right and here adding windows web server windows web server you can add any name here it's uh, your call then it asks you application and os image that's what i was telling you it's an amazon machine image i'm talking about amazon machine image i'm going to discuss in detail but here you have two options you have amazon machine image which is created by aws itself here it is showing you all the images whether it is linux mac os ubuntu windows red hat sushi all the linux distribution flavors are available here scroll down instance type instance what is instance type instance type is like what kind of configuration you are looking for for instance type you need to go to this link and start let me just write here instance family ec2 instance family when i come to ec2 instance family you will see aws is giving lot of variety for you lot of variety means general purpose machine compute optimized memory optimized escalator computing so what does it mean it means that they have different different variety for example you are saying hey aws i need 64 gb of ram in that case aws says you can choose this machine in case you say hey aws i need memory optimized instance memory optimized means i am going to develop one gaming application in that case aws says go with memory optimized in memory optimized you have different different flavor you can see you can see series this is you can see companies if you take this example with the mobiles in mobiles we have samsung right in mobiles we have iphone in another variety right other companies also if you say memory optimized this is another company kind of thing you can say for example i am saying in memory optimized i have samsung 100 samsung 200 samsung 300 depends on feature you are going to pay money right so if you click on r5a series in this series you have this much of capacity 768 gb ram right if you scroll down it has maximum 768 gb of ram so if you go with high memory in high memory it shows you that it has a memory gb of 24000 as a ram that much of capacity it gives to you but i am going to create one general purpose instance and in general purpose also they have very wide uh, variety available like m61 m6 in m6 m5 t1 t2 t3 lot of options are available so here i am going to choose that option when you go to ec2 instance <clears throat> here it is asking you option which one you want to choose if i click on this scroll you will see a list like 42 gb 96 gb 190 2 gb right so here i am choosing 
let's suppose 2 GB. This one I'm going to choose. T2 dot small, family to T2, 2 GB of memory and key pair. What is key pair? Key pair is a thing that you will need this key pair while retrieving a password. So when you are going to create this instance or when you are going to launch this server or when you are going to launch this VM, ultimately you need some kind of password so that you can connect with that machine, right? And to retrieve this password, you need some authentic way that you are the right user. And that is why AWS is giving you option key pair. Using this key pair, what you can do is click on this create new key pair, a one file will be downloaded. And once that file will be downloaded, under that file, you will be having private key. And that private key you will give to AWS when you want to retrieve a password. Let me write any name here. For example, I'm giving test file. Test file, create key pair. So this file is downloaded, right? So moment I click on this file, if you want to see what is available in this file is, it will show you that private key is available. This is private key guys, private key. I will use this key later moment of time, but at this moment of time, I'm just closing this file. Cool, right? Cool. So far, so good, right? We are on track. Any, any questions, anything in your mind? Taking as no. Cool. Next section is network setting. Network setting is the backbone of AWS. Network setting is backbone of AWS. This is super important part. VPC, subnetting, internet gateways, NAT gateways that we will see in another lecture. But as this moment of time, I'm just telling you one thing. I'm going to create this instance in default VPC. Now you might ask me this question, what is default VPC? The VPC is a virtual private cloud, virtual private cloud. So when you look for one service, VPC, it shows you isolate cloud resources. By default, when you're going to log in in your AWS account, you automatically will see one VPC is created by AWS. One VPC is created by AWS. This VPC I'm creating. Uh, talking about. If I click on this VPC, you will see one VPC is available. And if I scroll to the right, you will see a section default VPC, which is yes. This is a default VPC, right? So this is what I'm talking about. This is a default VPC. This is a default VPC. So here I am going to choose my default VPC, but answer to your question uh, that who has this question, there was somebody, Siva, right? Uh, who has this question? Can we choose uh, Saipavan, right? Saipavan, right? Saipavan, answer to your question. Once you click on this network setting part, you will get an option here, subnet. Under the subnet, you have three options. In Mumbai, I have three availability zones, right? So here it is giving you three options, AP South 1B, AP South 1C, AP South 1A, but they don't disclose the exact location. But you can choose, I need all the machine in 1B, that you can do. And you also mentioned like we, uh, the instances will be stored in three availability zones, right? That will cost extra if we want that option. Where is that thing? No, that option we have to create. We have to, that option I'm talking about, go to EC2, this part, instances. Here you will see a option of placement group. Let me scroll down. You will find the option of placement group. Okay, I see. The network security. 
yeah this one placement group under the placement group you have three options if you're going to create a place placement group it will show you cluster spread partition that is where you will design your if you if you want your system to be in a uh, single rack that is also possible okay it's also possible three partitions they give uh, the three options it will give you in the coming session we'll also explore about placement group practically on this okay. any more questions here uh the thing while you create the key value pair it all it shows two options right one is for ppm and one is for ppk and it is shown for ppm it's for only ssh part so where do we use this ssh i will tell you i will take because i have taken a two examples here one is for windows one is for linux for linux you use ppk okay i will take you on that i will do a practical on it as of now uh, i'm seeing subnet i'm choosing here is uh, ap south 1b auto assign public ip is enable and security group who don't know about the security group guys this is very very important security group security group means what traffic is allowed what traffic is not allowed it's kind of firewall that's why aws says firewall security group security group is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic for your instance here i am saying what i am going to choose here is because i am going to work with window here and choosing windows here i am going to change from linux to windows and in windows i am going to take 4 gb of instance this one i'm going to take 4 gb of instance and a which key i want to take it for example i'm saying here i want to take it uh, window test window test key create key pair i am taking in ap south 1 and here i am saying please be focused now here i am saying i want to create two rdp two rules one is says rdp should be allowed another security group rule i am going to add and here i am saying http 80 which works on port 80 should be allowed for everywhere everywhere means 0.0.0.0/0 means everywhere whole internet 0.0.0 slash 0 means whole internet i am talking about scroll down configure storage how much storage you are looking for i am giving 30 gb cool all things are good number of instances how much you need one let me click on launch instance let me click on launch instance so moment you click on launch instance it will accept your request and start creating machine for you and when it start creating machine for you it is going to take 2 or 3 minutes of time internally because it has to install windows and everything on that operating system right so it will going to take 2 or 3 minutes of time till the time if you click on instances you will start seeing this option here this is option window web server so if you see now i can see three instances are available one is linux git demo that i have just given a demo to someone linux git demo i have installed git on linux machine then we have linux vg machine where i am working with jenkins where i am working with chef and sibel on this machine this is in stopped state and this is terminated so multi you can say instance type instant state can be running can be stopped can be terminated 
So if you refresh now, if you refresh now, now you can see window web server is running, but status check is initializing. Initializing means it is under the progress as of now, not live as of now. It is under the progress. So you have to wait for one more minute. But after one minute, what you will do is you will create, you will retrieve a password. So before retrieving a password, let me click on this row. The moment I click on this row, it will start showing you public IP address of this machine. And here is private IP address. Here is, this is public. This is private. Right, this. So this public IPv4 address denotes you that you can connect with this machine using public IP from anywhere. How can I say that anywhere? That is what I'm going to take you to the security part of it. And once I click on this security part, this is what AWS is automatically created for you and attached to this instance this security group. If I click on this security group in, and take you in the separate window, it will show you inbound and outbound rule of that security group. This is what I was talking about. Inbound rule and outbound rule. In inbound rule, if I click on edit inbound rule, you will see there are two rules as of now. One is RDP rule, which work on port 389. If you stay focused here, this is what I'm talking about. Port range is 3389. And this is HTTP range. 80. HTTP works on 80. And port your RDP works on 3389. Right? And both of them allowed with, with whole internet. Although it's not a good practice to allow from everyone for the whole internet, but in a coming time, we will work on this also. As of now, just for the demos understanding, we are able to see that this we are taking with the help of whole internet, but this is against the security. In a coming time, when we come to discussions of securities in AWS, we will understand how to limit this, how to limit, how to or remove this even. We'll see in one of the session, even without adding a RDP, you can take a remote using Bastion client, using system managers. There are tons of way available in AWS because this is the first session. We are going with very basic things, but in a coming time, you will see very advanced topics. So let me delete this now and go back to your instance. Let me refresh. If I refresh now, you see two upon two check past. Wow, right? It says everything is done. Do not write checkbox to you. Now you have to connect this instance with your operatings with your RDP. What you will do in that case is click on this and retrieve a password. Go to actions, click on security get windows password go to upload private key file and here i have windows test key open this and click on decrypt password the moment you click on decrypt password it will give you password copy this password and keep it somewhere notepad can you please show this once again i guess Go to Windows, go to Actions, go to Security, go to Get Windows Password. You have to upload same file here, which you have uh, downloaded, right? Because in that in that file, you have private key. AWS has given a private key at the time of creation of that file. And now you have to give back that file to AWS to retrieve a password. I have that file available, right? I'll click on open and I will click on decrypt password. Got it? Uh, yes. So why we are using this one? 
Uh, which one? Oh, creating this, getting this Windows password again. No, no. Earlier we have created a file only, which is a it. We never uh, demanded for password earlier. Earlier oh. we have created a file. And now AWS wants authenticity from you that you are the right user to retrieve a credential and you have to give your private key to them. Okay, got it. Here you have just downloaded the file. You're good or you need more explanation? Yeah, I'm good. Right. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Now I'm going to connect with the server. What you will do, click on this, say connect, click on RDP client, download remote desktop file. You have two options. You can either download this remote option or you can just go through with the RDP also. I'm going to download this file. It is downloaded, Windows web server dot RDP. So I will double click on this file. This will open remote desktop connection. It will ask confirmation. I'm saying yes, I want to connect. It will ask you password. Password, I will call, paste this. I have the password, right? And click on OK. Click on yes. Wow. Your machine is ready. In a few minutes, your machine is ready, right? Now you can work on this machine, whatever you want to do. Yeah, this is my machine. Now on this machine, I want to, like I have stated to you, I'm going to create EC2 instance using operating system, Windows operating system and I will host default web app. For hosting default web app, what I am going to do is, I will be installing IIS, which is an internet information server. Before that, I want to take a pose and take a questions, any kind of questions you have, Arvind, Vivekanan, Samuel, Gaurav, Hari, any kind of question you have, Yashika? So in yeah. general, uh, I'm facing some small issues like while launching this uh, connective instance. So it's showing like virtual machine is unable to connect and it is popping up. And uh, is that because of security thing? Yes. Okay. So the process you did before will help me to overcome that, right? Yes, right. Okay. You just need to make sure your instance is having the right security group. If you go to instances, you click on instances and you will find your security group. Go to security. This is your security group. Go to that security group and check if RDP is allowed or not. These entries. These entries are allowed or not. Check that piece. So here, yeah, Pradeep, any question? Uh, when you say uh, this is available from anywhere in internet, what the, mm. does that mean? Uh, means? What does that mean is if you having a credential, if these credentials, if you're having username and password, you can connect with this instance from anywhere in the world. 0, .0, .0, 0 means any IP. So that will be the uh, IP of my uh, RDP, right? No, no, no. That will not be IP of your RDP. What I'm saying is, for example, I'm giving you few details. Let me give you that details. You are just, for example, you are my employee. I want you to connect on that instance. So what I will do in that case is, I will come to this instance. I will come to Windows. I will give you this public IP, okay. right? Yeah. I will give you this public IP. You can copy this public IP, then go to RTP in your machine mm. and you will enter this IP here and you will 
press on connect right so once you click on connect it will ask you credentials in credentials you will go to user account and you will type it here administrator and if you have the password you can connect with it so by default the user will be administrator by default for windows it will be administrator for linux it will be ec2 user okay so that means if you come now to the security point answer to your question 0.0.0, .0 means you can connect from whole internet okay. but let's suppose you are going to join one organization and mm -hmm. your organization says you can only connect this instance from one ip what in that case you will do is you will remove this and you will enter only ip one ip you will get the option of a my ip also this is my system ip only i can connect with this okay in but case you say only my team can access it then you can go with custom also under the custom you have multiple varieties available i will tell you in coming times how to create this all but you can limit at every level but this 0.0, .0 .0 means it is open for all which is against the security but yes. security is not what i'm trying to deliver you at this moment of time i'm just trying to give you flavor how to create ec2 instance and connect with it All right now you got yeah. it yeah, yeah yeah i got it so http is uh, something which is a uh... Uh, I will tell you why I'm adding at HTTP. That also I will tell you. Don't just give me two minutes of time. I'll tell you that also. Okay. Save rules. Cool. Now let me go to my machine now. And here in this machine, I am going to install IIS. In case you don't know what is IIS. IIS is an internet information web server provided by Microsoft. Just like Apache, right? We have multiple web servers available. Here I am going to install IIS. So how you will install it? You will write server manager. Once you go to server manager, you will find an option here. Add roles and features. Even though you can download even though you can download IIS from internet install, that is another way, but using server manager, you can also install. So what I'm going to do here is add, click on add roles and features and click on next. You just have to click next, next, next couple of things you blindly you can do next. But here you have to select web server IIS. I want to install this add features next 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 install so what i am doing here is i am installing iis on this machine iis on this machine once i am installing iis you will understand role of port 80 that you were asking here right this is a port 80 why i am adding 80 here because i want to access my default application on that port this is what I'm doing. Why I'm doing a solution of IAS. I want to see that application over the net. You can also see that. I will give you IP of that machine. And with that IP, you will be able to see my website. Default VP, default website. So it will take few seconds of time. Installation is in progress as of now. So done. Now close this instance and come back to your instances. This is your instance. Right? Click on this, copy this IP and hit in the separate URL. Wow. You can see this website, right? If I copy this URL and give to you in the chat, you will also be able to see the website. You can try in at your end. You will see a similar website page. Wow. 
what is got it guys now answer to your question you were asked one question why we are adding a port 80 that if i'm going to change here uh, i'm going to instances uh, where it is if i go to instances this is my instance right go to instances this is my instance and here i'm saying go to security click on security group click on add inbound rules here it is saying port 80 right if i am deleting this entry and saving the room your website will not work refresh it will stop working why because it works on port 80 it works on port 80 HTTP works on port 80 and you have denied the port at port 80 on that web server, right? So now this website is hanging. It is not working, right guys? That's the reason. Sai Bhavan or who asked this question? Pradeep, right? So now if I'm going to EC2 again and I'm adding an inbound rule and saying which is HTTP allowed for everyone same rules again your website will start working refresh did you get that yep cool any questions so far one small doubt uh like why uh we use this tcp http and uh, i mean http is for website thing uh, mm -hmm. but where do we use this tcp TCP is for RDP. TCP, your your RDP works on TCP protocol. Okay, RDP in the sense what is that? I don't. RDP I... means remote desktop connection. This is when you say okay. remote R. In generally, we call we should call it a remote desktop connection, but okay. we call it RDP. This remote desktop connection. Remote desktop connections means you are taking a remote of another system from uh, your system. Okay. This is called RDP. Okay. There are some other uh, types, right? So can you please help us like why we use those? Which one? Which one? Uh, this if we scroll on this, yeah. SMTP. I... Yeah, there are a lot of things comes into the picture. Uh, I can take another example. For example, here I'm using RDP, right? In another example, I will use now SSH. SSH is for the Linux operating system. This is not, all things are not for Windows. There are multiple different flavors, right? Now let me do one thing. Let me create one EC2 instance using Linux. I will go to instances. I will click on launch instances. This time I'm going to create Linux web server. So here I'm saying Linux web server. Linux web server. I'm going to choose Windows, uh, sorry, Amazon Linux. Instance type is same. I'm going to work with one GB memory. Key pair. I want to create this key pair. I think somebody has asked this question, right? Why we have dot pm dot pk. Now I'm going to select dot pk file. And here I'm choosing an option for any name you can do. Demo Linux. Create key pair. I have downloaded this file, right? Dot ppk. Go to networking. You want to change something? No. See, earlier in Windows case, we were getting allow RDP, right? In, in Linux, we have allow SSH. Allow SSH traffic from anywhere and HTTP also allowed. Ultimately, this is the layman terms, but internally AWS is creating a security group for you and then adding a inbound rules. Here, I'm giving 8 GB as a storage by default. Number of instances, 1. I want to create this, launch this instance now. So the Click on launch. Uh, one question. Uh, yeah, please. 
the number of instances means uh, you can have uh, you can have five, ten. If you're, let's suppose your manager says, please create a Windows ten instances. What you will do is write ten instances here. Uh, that means ten people can uh, connect that IP, right, at a time. No, no, ten machines will be created. Ten machines will be created, and ten people can be uh, using that. Yeah, by default, on one machine, two people can connect in Windows. Okay. I have a question, please. Yeah, Ibrahim. Yeah, um, since we're talking about security group, I joined late, but since we're talking about security group, so what do we mean by um, stateful and stateless and when and how do we use it? Stateful and stateless. So yeah. can you ask your question again? Yeah, um, I know I've come across, um, I've gone to an interview and they asked me the difference between um a stateful and a statement um um a stateless um and they asked me about um what is a security group and what is a stateful and a stateless so uh, i don't really understand that part that's what i'm asking no i think your question is incomplete according to me it's incomplete there's no security group you have to uh, create according to stateful and stateless that if you are creating a web, web API or you are creating a WSDL, that accordingly you need to change the ports of that. But security group, you are not going to change. Your question seems to be incorrect to me. Well, but do you understand um, when, um, that term state for stateless when, when you're talking about when we're working on um, out? I think HTTP is for stateless. Uh, I think in those perspective, they ask that in the protocol which we use. Yeah, I think the protocol kind of. Uh, you mean it's a HTTP uh, servers like we when we add the security groups, yes. we're gonna use this. Uh, yes. HTTP group. means like it is used for weekend. HTTP here, HTTP used for only we can uh, access the VM using HTTP protocol. That's it. Nothing else. So what was the what was the complete question? Can you share the complete question? What was the scenario? Um, let, let me just do a quick research. I'll ask the question again when I get a proper way of asking. Okay. Okay, let me go to Linux and check if my inst instance is ready. Linux instance, let me refresh. Rachel, do you have any questions? Rachel, any questions? Okay. My Linux web server is ready now. Let me go to my Linux web server, copy this IP and for Linux, I would be using PuTTY. So in case you're not aware about PuTTY, PuTTY is a way to take a sessions of Linux machines. Here I'm saying I want to connect with this instance. IP is this. And you have to provide a SSH connection file. Go to credentials. In case you are not aware about from where to download PuTTY, it is very easy. You just go to internet and download this PuTTY and click on private key. And you have to this one demo linux.ppk and click on open once you click on open i want to change the color also go to colors in a default background i want to modify the color as a maroon color and i want to increase the font also let me go to appearance i'm changing the font size by default it is giving you 10 i'm going to change it to 16 or 18 and okay and click on open so once you click on open, a shell will be opened like this, where you can write a commands. Like I'm, I'm saying for the for the Windows, there was a default user as an administrator, but but in Linux, it will be easy to user. Once you click on easy to user and press enter, it will say authentication successful, and it starts showing you Amazon Linux 2023. Now I want to install. 
couple of softwares, not couple of softwares. I just want to install web server. So for the web server, I have the command ready. Uh, let me run that command. First command would be you have to enter the sudo user, sudo user, sudo user. Sudo user means that I want to convert to super user, sudo su. After that, I want to install httpd. You might ask me what is httpd hyphen y. So in that case, if you're writing this yum, yum is a package and you are doing the installation here and which package you want to install httpd you want to install and why i'm giving hyphen y hyphen y i'm giving because if you're not giving hyphen y it will start asking you yes or no in every installation and that is what i don't want that's why i'm giving hyphen y up front here so moment I type this command and press enter, it will start installing httpd, which is Apache web server. It has started, right? So it is showing you it has started download package, install packages, download packages and installation is done. Now, after installation, you have to start this service. Because as of now, if you see the status of this service using this command httpd status, it will show you that service is inactive. Service is inactive. Service is inactive. But I want to start it. How you will start it? You will use one command service httpd start. Press enter. It will be started. Once your service is started, you will go to your instance. You will click on your instance. This is your IP, right? Copy this IP and go to internet and hit this IP. Wow. It says it works. That means your Linux machine is able to host your website now. It works means that it is working fine. Did you get that, Chris? Yes. Can't we use EC2 connect instead of this putty? Uh, can't you? Uh, EC2 connect is there an option, right? When we go to instances connect. This one you are saying, right? Uh, yeah. You can come to instances and you can yeah. come to that. This one and you are saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that you also can do. Both options are there. EC2 instant connect, you can also do session manager, also you can do SSH client, you can also do serial console, also you do multiple ways to work. Yeah, RDP, you know, we can. Uh, there is option for <laughs> Please go one by one. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the thing here, you can see this. This account is not authorized to use EC2 serial console, right? Uh, this is the error I frequently get when I not launch the to get, right? Yeah. This I one, want to right? connect. This is not the That's... error. Actually, what you have to do is when you have to connect with this uh, EC2 serial console, certain permissions you have to add. You have to add one role. You have to add one role. Okay. Let me do one thing. Let me take one more scenario. That is going to be an awesome scenario in front of you that I'm going to discuss now. This is Windows instance, right? This is Windows instance. And if I click on this, I have security rules here. If I go to this security, I have security group, right? On that security group, I have these rules. But what if I want to connect with that instance without this 3389? Without this RDP, what I, I'll do in that case is without RDP, we're gonna use this, uh, uh, the same EC2 connect will be used. Yes, right, that we can use. So, okay, so I wanted to, um, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, please, I think I wanted to help. I wanted to help. I don't know the guy that was asking about 
security groups and then the difference between the state full and the state led. So um, in my opinion, I think that um, when it comes to security groups, stateful means like, let's say any changes that are made to the inbound rule um, will automatically be reflected in the outbound rule. Let's say, for example, if you um, allow inbound ports to, let's say, port 80, which is HTTP, then automatically the outbound ports will also be allowed. But then um, when it comes to stateless, um, on the other hand, NACL would be a stateless. Let's say the changes that will be made in the inbound rule will not reflect the outbound rule. So you then need to add, let's say, a separate rule. For example, let's say if you add an inbound rule to port 80 on HTTP, then you'd have to explicitly like, um, you know, add the outbound rule. So yeah, that is what I can help with. Okay. Cool. Okay, let me take one more scenario here. This, uh, let me go to Windows 1 and click on Connect. There's the option, right? Session Manager. With that Session Manager also, you can connect with your instance without any RTP port. So without any RTP port, you can connect to Session Manager. So what are the steps will be involved? And just to tell you, everyone who is going to join this session, there will be a lot of assignments I'm going to give you. These assignments will be uploaded on the GitHub link also. You can see that once you are going to enroll for this. Uh, let me show one scenario to you. You would really enjoy this. Uh, here it is, session manager plugin. This one I was talking about. So without RDP, I want to connect with my machine. For that, you have to follow these four steps and four steps I am going to follow. First of all, I am going to create a role. In case you don't know what role is, I will try to take a separate session on the IAM. I will do a separate session. But for this moment of time, you can say I am going to create a one role with these permissions. Just understand this part. Role I will discuss separately with you. Is it fine with everyone? Yes. Okay. I'm but here you are the root user, right? So why do we need these permissions? No, no, no. When uh, this on this yes, instance, yes. on this instance, you are not able to see this connect button, right? Even yes. though you are root user, you are not able to see this connect. You will only be able to see this connect button once you have the uh, these uh, permissions assigned. Access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So guys, just to tell you, in case you are not familiar with this thing, I have taken a remote of one of the instance, right? This was my instance. If I click on this, this is my Windows server, right? If I click on connect, you can connect using session manager also. But session manager, in session manager window, you are not able to see connect button, right? How can I see that button? So my basic goal is, I want to create one instance and I want to connect it without RDP. And the, that is what we are doing in companies. You don't open the RDP client for everyone. It's against the security. So what I'm going to do is that case is, first of all, I'm doing it quickly. Don't worry, I will repeat this part again once you're going to enroll. This is just for demonstration I'm doing it. I'm going to IAM. And under the IAM, I'm going to create one role. Under the IAM, is, it's the Identity and Access Management Service. I'm going to click on Roles. So once I'm going to the Roles, click on Create Role. And here I'm choosing AWS Service. Here I will be choosing EC2 because I want to create this role for EC2. In case you are not familiar with how I am creating this, you would get it in a couple of sessions. But as of now, just follow the same steps, click next. And here I want to add three policies. Three policies is, one is Amazon EC2 role for SSM. This one is first, add. Second is 
Amazon SSM Manage Instance 4 and third one would be Amazon SSM Full Access. Press enter. These third three policies I have added. Click on next. You can see three policies are added. And here I'm giving a role name EC2 without RDP demo. EC2 without RDP demo. And I'm going to create a role. Cool. My role is created successfully. Now I am going to work with EC2. I am going to create one EC2. Or you can attach this role to your existing instance also. That also you can do it. Go to dashboard. Let me create a new instance. Launch instance. Here I am giving web server without RDP port, without, without, without RDP port. All right. Here I'm choosing Windows or here I'm choosing, let's suppose 2 GB or 4 GB, whatever you want to take it. Create a new key pair. I already have the key pair, right? Which one I have used for Windows? This one, window test key, network setting. I'm going to use, this time I'm allowing RDP traffic, but I will remove it later. But one thing for everyone, one thing you have to do is uh, scroll down, click on advanced details. And here you need to choose your role. In IAM instance profile, you need to choose the same role you have created. EC2 without RDP demo. Okay, that's it. Launch this instance. And similarly, we have to wait for two, three minutes here. If this is what you're not getting, don't worry, I will repeat this part. The purpose was to show you how to create a EC2 instance in Windows and Linux that you have already seen, right? AMI, we will skip that because in the place of AMI, what we are doing is now session manager part. So we will not, we will not have more time. Probably we can wrap up this session in 10 more minutes. Click on instances, refresh. As of now, this is coming, right? Without RDP, it is showing you initializing. Probably in one minute, this instance will be there. And I will show you how to connect with it. And before connecting, you have to make sure one thing. On your machine, you have to install AWS CLI. Also, you have to install Session Manager plugin. Session Manager plugin for Windows. In case you are using Linux, you have to install for a Session Manager plugin for Linux. This software, Session Manager plugin, you will find it very easily. Just go to Google and say Session Manager plugin install for Windows. Go to website of AWS, this website you will find a link here. You just need to download and install. This is for Windows. Copy this plugin link and install. After installation, you need to run this step. I will tell you how. Go to your instances first. Where is my instance? Click on instances. Let me close out the window which are not needed. Let me refresh. This is live, right? This web server is there. Let me click on this. Now let me click on connect. So moment you click on connect, you will see this. This time you will see this button, right? Connect. 
So click on this connect. So once you click on this connect, a session will be open for you. Session is going to open for you. This is your session, right? This is opened. Now next step would be you have already done session manager plugin. What you have to do is copy this AWS SSM session manager command is and go to your CMD, click and paste this command. But before pasting the command, you have to change something in this command and understand what this command is doing. This command is doing AWS SSM start session. SSM means system manager, system manager start session hyphen hyphen target. Target means which instance? This is a target. Copy this ID. Go to same window. Uh, this one and replace this. Paste. Hyphen hyphen document name AWS start port forwarding session which is working on local port number 6060 and actual port number is 3389. Copy this command. Go to your CMD, right? Paste it here and press enter. Once you press enter, it says session starting, right? Session starting, cool, open for connections. Now what you can do is go to your RDP and you can type here, local host and what is the port you want to connect 6060 6060 connect you're connected but you don't have the password right for password i'm going back and i'm going to retrieve a password go to actions security and get windows password same key i have to use uh, windows test key and copy this password, decrypt, copy, and uh, go to machine, where it is, this one, and enter your password. Click on OK. Yes. See, now you are connected on local host. Even though now you go to your instances and remove the RDP, that connection will be live. Go to security, click on uh, the security group, click on edit inbound rule and I'm removing this save rules. Still you are connected with this instance, right guys? Wow, right? Yes. Yes. So there are multiple things will be available according to your use case or time to time we will explore a lot of things. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm good for today. Any kind of questions you have. Can you please repeat what is the use of the sessions manager? Session manager is useful when you don't want to use RDP port. This RDP rules, no security group is there, right? But, but still you can connect with RDP instance without any security. So this session manager comes into the picture when security comes into the picture. So you are increasing the security of your components or EC2. This we can do for Linux machines also. Yeah, yeah, that process will be little different, but you can do the same. So if you are giving no inbound rules, then the applications uh, uh, means not, nobody from the outside cannot connect to any application if it is running in the instance. Correct, right. That way you are adding more security, right? Nobody can come to your system. Okay, so uh, so this is this is this is in case of a scenario when you are uh, in when you, when your uh, this one instance is in private IP, then also you can connect connect in, connect through this sessions manager. Yes, right. So 
uh, if you log out from the rdp right now so are you going to connect it again yes yes <laughs> so but you the... remove the rules right yeah yeah gonna... even that that is going to work let me do it again rdp on session 6060 uh, what was the password i think already there you have connected you are again connected that rdp is not a matter for you rdp you add no that that is not dependent got it anyone more questions please let but me know need... any questions hello but we mm -hmm. need to first uh, port forwarding it is needed na yeah port forwarding is the way only internally what aws is doing if you understand this layman terms they are doing a state forwarding port forwarding they are doing nothing yeah. you are targeting a request to 600 they are hitting on 3389 so internally if you go with that they are just changing the way to connect it is a, a comes under the security but it is how they are doing it just they are doing a port forwarding only but for yeah. the outer yeah. world 3389 is blocked and they don't know you yeah. there so this uh, i have a very basic question uh, all these things uh, it, you just given a demo on the windows machine so i am having a mac so or is it any separate it uh, plugin or something or it can be done on mac also uh, to be honest i don't watch mark uh, work on the mac os what you can do is you can create a vm in aws and then work accordingly i am a good expert in aws uh, windows and linux okay so most of the sessions i will be taking on linux and windows okay uh, can you explain like how we going to do the course thing uh, course thing there are two courses basically here one is uh, aws solution architect we are going to target uh, in aws solution architect we have most of the stuff related to aws like identity and access management amazon ec2 and whatever i have mentioned here that we will do a practical like the way we have done so far vpc s3 how to create peering connections how to create uh, vpc how to create uh, nat gateways how to create nacl s3 how to take backups how to create replication rules how to store host web static web application in api gateway we have this stuff like creating a gateway add a trigger to lambda function how to deploy how to create multiple endpoints database services how to create databases in rds how to create dynamo db tables how to take backups how to create read replica instances most of the things of this course 80 to 85% would be practical on and if you start comparing the content is very 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 high level even elastic cache elastic cache for redis mem cache that will be covered in the database then coming back to route 53 this is very easy decoupling applications like sqs sns which is kinesis very very popular in the market right that also will see practical glue examples elastic beanstack aws lambda how to run lambda as an invoke functions how to configure an a application load balancer alb package libraries invoking lambda function on a schedule running trusted component lambda using aws signer cloud formation template iac how to run your templates how to create how to update how to create nested stack stack failure options then monitoring and after monitoring we'll explore security part like kms parameter store secret managers 
web application firewall, guard duty inspector. These are basically security tool in AWS. Cloud migration, I will take a couple of examples. Then DevOps. When we start with DevOps, this things comes into the picture. There's a separate part for DevOps we are going to do. For DevOps, we are going to target GitHub. We are going to target working with Jenkins. We are going to work in, working with Terraform or Docker deep dive, Kubernetes deep dive, that all things we will do a practical. So there are two flavors. One is AWS Solution Architect. This is one course. Another is AWS Solution Architect plus DevOps, this one. Does it answer your question? Who asked this question? I'm sorry, I missed that. Yes. Right. How, what are the hours like how, uh, like hours, hours wise, to be honest, when I work with IntelliPart and simply learn, I do provide 36 hours, but when I take my personal batches, I do provide 50 hours. Okay. Roughly, it's, uh, that will take, PM sorry, uh, like uh, how many days it gonna do? Uh, it will be a weekend batch. It would be every weekend we will be having four hours. So probably you can say it, it is going to take around two months or more than that. Okay. Do, like we need that to that uh, do we need prior knowledge of these? Not a bit, but whatever I'm telling you, I will be taking a lot of things in one session. Like we can take the example of today's session, like it is for one and a half hour, but you have to work hard. But if you really want to learn it, you have to do a practice on your behalf also. I will do the things very quickly because I have the setup, I have the knowledge, everything in my hands, right? I can do quickly. But when it's come to you, sometimes installation of software or sometimes take very higher time. So no prior knowledge, just a dedication, I think, will going to work. Instead of dedication, I will so discipline is going to work for you. If you are ready to provide for two, three hours on a daily basis for next two months, you will be at good place in AWS. So what will be the cost for this? Course, you can talk to Amit. There will be a number you can talk to Amit. Let me give his number. Nine five four zero six nine five six two eight zero six. Is our account manager, so you can have a word with him. You can talk to this uh, this number probably, and every assignment will be shared on the GitHub, and you can work accordingly. So. Probably it is going to take 40, 45 hours time, but this is the things we are going to cover. 40 hours of training, 12 hours of project and exercise will be there. I can help you in AWS certification questions, preparing one on one assignment. If you want one or two sessions, I can arrange a call, one or two dedicated section only for you, not more than two. Resume preparation I can do for you. Resume help if you want to add some projects and all. Mock interviews and job support only. This is not job guarantee. It's just a support that you are going for jobs, uh, interviews. You have some of the question you want to ask me separately. That is possible. So we'll be creating a WhatsApp group here. Everything will be shared on the WhatsApp like recordings and everything. Every session will be recorded and will be shared to you after the session. So instead of uh, sharing detail on uh, WhatsApp, can we also, can you also share on the email? Yeah, yeah, email is also fine. So I'm just telling you easy way, whichever works for you, that's fine. We, we can share the information over the Gmail also or any email you say. 
That's fine. You are going to start over when you. Uh, we have already started. This is the this was the first session, and now this will be a continued batch from the tomorrow. Who want to enroll, they can enroll, and they will be getting a link of joining the session for tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going with the same EC two part load balancer and other things. We are A -A -A AMI and load balancer. We are going to start from tomorrow. Okay. What is the time time? Of your class. I mean, as of now, would be six thirty p.m. to eight or eight thirty for few days. When I say few days, I'm talking about two three weeks. This would be timing six thirty to eight thirty. But after a few days, two weeks or three weeks, we can think. We can think for that time also five thirty p.m. To seven thirty, so it's in our hand. So people who wants to enroll, you can consider these two times. So whatever suits uh, we, most of the people, we will take that time. I'm available for both the times. Uh, yeah, is please. there any batch? Uh, is there any batch in the morning? Morning in weekdays, you are saying. IST. IST morning, right? Yeah. No, as of now. Uh, what is this time? Like IST or? Uh... Yeah, yeah, this is IST. Everything I am talking in IST. This is IST. And thanks for recording this. So, one general question I'm going to ask you. So, is chat gpt gonna impact on the cloud part also sorry what is your question so i uh, nowadays chat gpt getting very famous right mm -hmm. uh, is this gonna impact the cloud computing also no i don't know because people say coding uh, that chat gpt is able to code also but tell me a scenario where you are working on the production application we we you have the p1 scenario or p2 scenario can keep GPT can resolve it? No, Not a, no, right? Absolutely no. That's a predefined knowledge they have entered into the AI model, right? But yes. that cannot beat cloud computing. That computing applications, deployments, CI, CD, all things will be combination of manual plus automation. There cannot be a hundred percent automation in the service industry in the software development, right? Okay. And if that is a future, we will learn that way also. Be flexible <laughs> to that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm also doing a lot of research on Chat GPT. So if that is a future, we will learn that. Being a IT guy, we should not be worry about the technologies. To be honest, now that is. Whatever comes our way, we will learn it. Gone are the days when we were learning about one technology and that was running for 10 years. And I was <laughs> learning a lot of good things, good packages, right? Now, every one, every one day you have to learn. If you are not learning, you will be behind. Gotcha. So try to learn. Don't, as of now, you are learning AWS, might be in future. Like I'm AWS certified, I'm GCP certified, I'm Azure certified, Terraform certified. I don't know what is coming next to me, right? I'm happy and I'm enjoying that path. Just enjoy this path. Uh, don't, daily I'm giving you two hours of learning, whether it is Terraform, whether it is uh, Kubernetes, whether it is Docker, that's it. Two hours are okay for that. So, so this what is, is Terraform? Weird. Yeah, sorry. What is Terraform? Yeah, I'm Terraform expert also. I'm handling one of the team in my current project on Terraform. Terraform, I will also cover. If you are really want to learn, because I have mentioned Terraform also, Terraform, Chef, Ansible. I have very beautiful, I would say, real-time examples on Terraform also. I will share with you. Is this part of DevOps or 
any other yes thing. without without terraform you cannot proceed now even you have to learn cloud formation or terraform either of one will be work for you it's a combination if you really want to learn something i would advise you to go for devops because devops has a lot of things which are not available in aws so combination of that is going to work very well in that combination you will learn chef ansible github docker kubernetes very very good things right and yeah. you integrate with the jenkins right when you go for the continuous integration you integrate jenkins with chef you integrate jenkins with cloud formation template you integrate jenkins with uh, terraform template that is where you learn a lot of extra things and also a general question like uh we also have the other cloud platforms right so is this same as the aws like what so if you are doing aws you are doing uh, 56 in fact i would say 60% of other clouds also okay technology will remain same right computer is computer right nobody can change whether it is coming from the aws or gcp yeah. or any other cloud computer will remain same right dlls will be dll exe will be exe commands will be command code will be code right so yes. they are just creating a wrapper over it that's it they are giving naming convention and selling it to the market that's it is gorav manoj javis any more questions you have i have shared the number javis you were asking for no details right did you note down the number javis yes i have i i don't okay any more questions guys or we are good for today let's connect tomorrow if you join want to join it you can talk on this number 9540662808 Plus nine one if you're dialing from US or any other country. Any other question I can help you. In case you still want to talk to me, you can uh, call Amit. Amit will redirect a call to me. You can talk to me for any guidance or anything. I'm here. You can call me. Even though you can take on my number from Amit, uh, he will share my number and then you can talk to me. with that i am closing this session thanks a lot guys for this time let's connect tomorrow same time 6:30 pm ist okay thank you thank you thank you, thank you.